Hey everyone, a very good morning to all of you. Myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. Let's begin our video for current affairs. But before that, if you haven't subscribed our channel, then do subscribe, and you can get the PDF of this channel of this video on the Telegram channel. And the link of the Telegram channel is in description below, from where you can join the group. Okay, so let's begin with our first question. Which of the following statement is our true? So guys, it is true. about the sacred portal it is the first of its kind online employment exchange platform for senior citizens seeking job opportunities citizens above 50 years of age are eligible to use this platform sacred platform aims at alleviation of poverty by skill development of scsts this platform will be used for getting real time information about beggars in india this platform is aimed at increasing the outreach of the sugamya bharat mission to the rural area so which is the correct statement about this sacred portal so the correct statement is option a it is the first of its kind online platform that has been launched to provide employment to the senior citizens so this is basically an employment exchange platform where the senior citizens will register themselves and the employers will uh, find will recruit the senior citizens based on their skill set okay so that is the a uh, basic idea behind launching this sacred portal so this portal has been launched by ministry of social justice and empowerment and do remember that it was launched on a very special day that is international day of older person which is celebrated on october 1st okay so this sacred portal has a full form senior able senior able citizens for reemployment and dignity so this is the full form of this sacred portal which you of course have to memorize from your exam point of view next point here is that citizens above the year, age of 60 years can apply uh, for registration in this sacred portal next is who can use this portal so this portal is not only for senior citizens but employers obviously employers need to register themselves otherwise who will provide the employment the self help groups are there the senior citizens gaining skills and other agencies or individuals so all of these uh, agencies or entities we can say can register themselves can use the portal the sacred portal and citizens senior citizens can also gain some useful skills on this portal okay for example biodata uh, how to create your own resume or biodata something like that okay such kinds of skills are also being imparted on this platform next is funding so here you have certain data that you need to memorize from your exam point of view so rupees 10 crores have been allocated for this portal for development of this portal and after the development of this portal is complete rupees 2 crores will be given each year for this for the maintenance of this portal till 5 years okay so rupees 2 crores will be given every year till 5 years hmm? the portal has been developed on the recommendations of empowered expert committee report on startups for the elderly so this is the uh, committee uh, this is the report uh on which this portal has been developed so do remember the name of the committee as well as its report on startups for the elderly according to a study which is named as longitudinal aging study of india india will have over 319 million elderly population by 2050 in comparison to 120 million right now so this is a huge number and therefore it is important for the government for every one of us to focus on our senior citizens therefore this portal has been launched now recently elder line project has also been launched which is nothing but a grievance redresser helpline number for the senior citizens can you tell me the toll free number of the elder line helpline number in the comment section below let's see how many of you memorize the current affairs thoroughly okay next point here is the theme of the international day of older people so digital equity for all ages is the theme do remember the theme it is important and 2021 to 2030 is the decade of healthy aging so this is a uh, very old news this was announced last year only and this is how the sacred portal looks like okay and this is nothing but the purpose of this sacred portal which you can also read on your own when you will get the pdf of this ppt so here the next question is about 
Nobel Prize in Medicine. So, guys, this award was announced yesterday, and from yesterday onwards, this uh, the Nobel prizes in different categories will be announced till October 11, except for the weekends. Okay, so every day one Nobel prize will be announced, and we will be covering every Nobel prize in our video only, so you don't have to worry about it. Here we have the Nobel Prize in Medicine. So let's have a look at who has won this prize this year. So who is the winner? David Julius, Adam Bataposhian, Michael Horton, both A and B and both B and C. So out of these option D is the right answer, both A and B. David and Adam have won this award for 2021. Now why did these two scientists have won this award? So the reason is the di discovery of temperature or basically they discovered receptors for temperature and touch. So this is the reason for which they have got the Nobel Prize. Now, if you go into the details that what is the receptor and what is their research all about, then you have to do it on your own because from the exam perspective, this is not at all important. However, you need to have an awareness about the reason about the discovery for which they have got such a prestigious award. Nobel's are the most prestigious awards that we can ever have in the world. Okay, so obviously awareness hona bahut zaruri hai, but details mein jana is not important. Okay, so this is the reason the development of receptors uh, for temperature, or you can say the discovery of temperature and skin, the touch, human body heat. Okay, so that is the reason for which these two people, David and Adam, have got the award, and this is their discovery. Next is Union Environment Minister Bhupendra Yadav kicked off tiger rallies in 18 tiger range states across 51 reserves in the country as part of the Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav and Wildlife Week celebrations. What is the theme of the tiger rallies? So you have tiger for uh, India for tigers are ready on wheels, forest and livelihood sustaining people and planet, sustaining all life on earth, life below water for people and planet big cats these are the five options very easy to answer option a india for tigers a rally on wheels is the theme of the rallies that have been conducted or organized by the ministry of environment during the world wildlife week so when do we observe this world wildlife week from october 2nd to october 8th so right now this week is on now guys do pay attention do pay attention that this is the theme of world wildlife day 2021 so this world wildlife day is observed on march 3rd okay so this is the theme of the day and not the week but if you enter the uh, enter in the search engine of google that world wildlife theme 2021 world wildlife week theme of 2021 then this would be shown in the very first result okay but do remember if you read it carefully then it is clearly stated even in the first link itself which is of the united nations website that this is the theme of world wildlife day do not confuse it okay many websites have given this thing many uh, competitive websites as well it is mentioned on those websites that this is the theme theme of the World Wildlife Week, but it is not so, okay? So do correct your facts. It is the theme of the day, which is observed on March 3. Okay, so this is all written here that I have already told you and this we have already discussed. So the theme is India for Tigers, a rally on wheels. Next is, with which country has in India signed an agreement to help exporters of both countries in faster clearance through custom procedures? Germany, Netherlands, US, Denmark, Finland, the right answer is US. So basically this uh, agreement, the, which is named as Mutual Recognition Agreement for Exporters, has been signed between India and US in order to boost the export, in order to fast track the exports by recognizing their authorized economic operators who are authorized economic operators basically the people or the institutions which are in charge of exporting the goods actual in charge of exporting the goods in custom in each other countries okay be it india or us so basically this entire mou or 
this mutual recognition arrangement has been signed in order to fast track the exports between these two countries that is the whole reason and that is all that you need to study from your phase one perspective okay moving on to the next question which of the following missions will be NASA, will be the first nasa mission to jupiter's trojan asteroids viper lucy juno dawn galileo so out of these options lucy is the right answer so nasa will launch its lucy spacecraft on jupiter's trojan this october only on october 16 so in the next week this will be launched from this cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. Now, this is the first of its kind mission that will be studying the Trojan asteroids. Now, what are the Trojan asteroids? They are the asteroids ahead of Jupiter as well as behind Jupiter. So, a group of asteroids. So, this Lucy spacecraft will be studying that group of asteroids which is named as Trojan. Okay, and these groups, there are two groups that will be studied by this Lucy particularly. So, I'll show you. Okay, so here you can see that this is Trojan, this is Trojan, this is Jupiter. So one is ahead of Jupiter and one is behind Jupiter. And both of these will be studied by Lucy spacecraft. Okay, so this is a group of Ju Jupiter, oh, sorry, group of asteroids. Okay, next is that it is for 12 years. The lifespan of Lucy spacecraft will be 12 years okay and it will study it will go to eight different asteroids one in the main belt that is between mars and jupiter and one and the other seven are the different trojans trojan asteroids basically now lucy is the first solar powered spacecraft that will be launched at such a great distance from sun so now you can see here that sun is here and the distance of lucy will be very very huge so this will be the first solar powered spacecraft that will get its energy fuel from the sun but it is at such a higher distance and whenever we are talking about the spacecrafts or any kind of mission that is fueled by the solar energy then it becomes very important the distance between the spacecraft and the sun becomes very important thus it becomes the first ever solar powered spacecraft that is that is being launched at such a high distance from sun Lucy is the name of an ancient fossil that led to the study of evolution of human species that has a, an important role to play in the study of evolution of human species and in honor of this fossil basically the official logo of the Lucy mission is in the diamond shape as you can see it here okay so this is the logo of Lucy mission moving on to the next question Recently, Nabad has approved credit plan for Yak Husbandry to make Yak Rearing a profitable venture for the herders. In which state has this plan been launched? So, Sikkim, Arunachal Pradesh, Tripura, Nagaland, Mizoram are in the options, out of which Arunachal Pradesh is the right answer. So, Nabad has launched this credit, credit plan for Yak Husbandry. So, basically, Nabad will encourage the banks to lend more to the Yak herders so that the business of yak husbandry becomes more profitable if the people engaged in this business get liquidity only then they can move further in increasing or enhancing their business opportunities and business venture overall okay so this plan is going to encourage banks to lend more basically this is the idea behind this credit plan for yak husbandry now this plan has been designed by the national research center on yak which is located in dirang in arunachal pradesh that is why this plan has been launched in arunachal pradesh first okay so do remember the location of this center because this is important yak is also known as mountain cattle and i have already told you this that banks will be encouraged under this scheme let's have something on yaks now so yak basically Yak is one animal that is very useful in the Himalayan region because not only it is useful for giving milk and meat, its meat is also eaten in the Himalayan region, but it also gives, gives fiber 
and it is also the beast of the burden basically uh, it is used to uh, carry a heavy loads heavy burdens across the region so that is why it is a very useful animal in the himalayan region but rearing of this animal takes a lot of effort therefore the animal yak husbandry has been reducing and the because no one is paying attention on yaks therefore yak population has also been declining so if you see uh, the exact number then the number of yaks across the country has declined by almost 24.7% between 2012 and 2019 so within 7 years more than 24.7% of the yak population has been has perished so the reason behind this is lack of interest in yak husbandry and in order to revive that interest this scheme has been launched now do remember that total 58000 yak are there in india okay so this is important states with have which have high population of yaks are ladakh first jammu kashmir second anachal pradesh Sikkim, Himachal Pradesh, West Bengal, and Uttarakhand. So they are mentioned in the descending order. So the one which has the highest is mentioned at the first position. So let's move on to the next question. Which of the following bank is under the prompt corrective action framework at present? Indian Overseas Bank, UCO Bank, IDBI Bank, Central Bank of India, all of the above. So now, guys, if you are getting confused here, then I'm successful because that's the motive of having this question here. So I hope that you are confused a bit, but if you are confused, then don't worry. It's a good sign because I made the question tricky, and I hope that you won't get confused in the examination and after having discussed this question. Okay, so let's discuss this question. The right answer here is Central Bank of India. All of these three banks have been removed from the list of prompt corrective action of RBI. Okay. so the right answer here is central bank of india because you have to pay attention to this word as well but in case if the question would have asked you that which of the following bank was there in the prompt corrective action or has been a part of the prompt corrective action then what would you have answered the right answer then would be all of the above okay but right now at present is there so we have to pay attention to the question itself so the right answer is central bank of india now recently the indian overseas bank has been removed from the prompt corrective action list this year only idbi bank and uco bank both of both of these banks have also been removed and chances are that that the central bank of india will also be removed from this framework in the coming days okay so this pca framework was introduced in december 2002 very important do remember the year in which this framework was introduced the purpose is very obvious to monitor and regulate the banks and supervise the bank particularly uh, the banks which perform very weak which have a weak performance in the financial parameters so that is all about this news and about this today's video thank you so much for watching the video and if you have liked it then do subscribe our channel and join the telegram channel as well the pdf of this session will be provided on the telegram channel thank you so much